so I kind of started this day off like going to work, coming home, eating food, and then eating like 15 Oreos. Legit not kidding. I ate like an entire sleeve of Oreos pretty much. And it's like literally 1131 in the AM right now. So days turn out really well. I love Oreos. They're like my favorite. Okay, so you know, when I build EDH decks, I really try hard to not run the same cards in a lot of them, but there's just some cards that I just love like a whole lot and I find myself doing that. Like, you know, it's funny, it's like when I'm in, I'm in the process of building ladies right now and a lot of people recommended like lady planeswalkers, but I already have super friends and I'm like, I don't want to like put in other super friends. Uh, like. I have to run Elspeth Sun's Champion because she's just too nuts not to run, but like there's certain cards I'm just like, I, I just don't want to do that. Um, but one thing, you know, that I find myself really enjoying doing an EDH decks is really having some version or some form of tutoring in my deck. My Tassiger deck, I don't even know how many tutors I have in that deck. I should count, I'm actually really curious to see, but I've got like a ton in there. And the deck also has like recursion, so if someone's like, counter your thing, I'm like, okay, so we just bring it back and recast it again. Um, so yeah, basically, um, I'm a huge fan of this. I think it's really good. There's like a lot of instances where it's like, if I don't top deck a board wipe or I don't tutor for a board wipe, I'm gonna lose. So yeah, I love this sort of thing. I think it's a really good thing to have in like every ADH deck ever, basically. So these are a couple of my favorite tutors. This is just part one. I will be doing the other parts in the future. Um, and you know, the way that I do these is I don't specifically do a color combination. I just kind of, we're going to be talking about like, like a lot of the colors in here. So the first is Liliana Vess. And you know, what's funny. She's like, I think one of the first planeswalkers that I found myself just really enjoying. And you know, it's funny is cause like I have her and I'll, I'll, like a lot of times I just get her like, you know, I, I immediately minus her for her tutoring ability. I mean, she's got these other really sweet abilities, but I really don't pay attention to those a lot of times. The only time I usually use her uptick um, is like, I, I make someone discard something because I need to get her at two so I can tutor again. But you know, if you've got like ways to protect her, it's like really good so that you can get like at least her minus off two times. Um, it does go on top. So it's a little bit vulnerable, the card that you put on top if someone makes you like mill something um, or whatever, but she's really, really, really good. I mean, the fact that, like, you can get basically two free, um, times where you can look through your deck to get whatever you want is really good. She works amazingly in Super Friends, and the reason why I like her so much is because she goes on, you know, she puts it on the top, and then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have, like, Jace or Kiora or, like, something where I get to, or, um, Obnixilis, and I get to, like, draw an additional card or something like that, and I'll just have those, and then I'll put it on top, and then I'll immediately draw it. So I do things like that all the time, like, in my deck. It's a really sweet little synergy, which I really like. Um, yeah. Liliana is awesome. I mean, like I said, I like it because it has those other abilities. They're there if you need them, but really like the thing that I really care about in this card is her minus two because it's like really good. So, and you don't have to reveal it. You do not have to reveal it. So you can just grab anything. Oh, that's great. I love when people try to guess what I'm like tutoring up. It's really fun. Okay, the next we have is Gerard's Orders. Now, of course, this card belongs in like pretty specific decks, I would say. Oh, I'm just realizing I need to sit a little bit farther back. Hopefully my head is not cut off. Okay, so, um, and now I'm like far away from my laptop and like I really can't see anything. So this is great. So I know what these cards do. Uh, let's see. So Gerard's Orders, um, again, really belongs, I think, in a specific type of deck, something where you're doing a little bit of recursion as well. Um, you know, just the fact that like for, you know, what I really love doing with this card is I, I run this in Tassiger and I get Artisan of Kozilek into my hand. Um, so an Artisan of Kozilek is like a nine mana cost card. So, you know, it's, it's, it's up there, but card's so good. So you get that. And then Artisan of Kozilek is a 10, nine Annihilator two, I believe, um, nine mana cost 82 bees. You get a creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield, which is just really good. So my favorite thing to do is get, um, is get Artisan of Kozilek like I'm gonna have Prime Speaker go into my graveyard, Prime Speaker is a Ghana, have that enter, Prime Speaker enters, I draw um, X cards where X is the number of um, the biggest power I think that you have in one creature on the board. Um, Artisan's a 10-9, Prime Speaker starts out as a 1-1, one, one, so you draw 11 cards out of it, which is really good. So if you're running Tassiger or even um, 
um, so, yeah, Sadissi, um, Sultai Sadissi, you, or you're just running anything in Sultai in EDH, you really need to check out Gerard's orders and do that little combo, because it's really fun and really sweet. Um, or I'll do something like, you know, Artisan of Kozilek into Eternal Witness, or Artisan of Kozilek into Runescar Demon, like, all that sort of synergy, it's just really, really good. You don't have to run this with Artisan of Kozilek, but I think it's really good. I think it's one of the really good cards that I've seen that have really helped me out, where I get an additional creature back. Um... Yeah, or just putting things in your graveyard. Like, there's certain things that you want in your graveyard, like, um, uh, Wonder is really good to have in your graveyard. If it's in your graveyard, could you just control flying? Um, then there's the black one. I'm blanking on the black one, and I think there's a green. The green one's brawn, I know that. That has, what is that, reach? I don't even know. But yeah, there, there's all, like, the special abilities. And then the, the black is Swamp Walk. I just don't remember the name of it right now. But yeah, Draw Dark Orders is, like, really good. I like it a lot. Okay, then we have Mystical Tutor, and um, if you're playing, I would say, any sort of control strategy, uh, Mystical Tutor I think is really good. It's a one mana instant, so I really like that because you can do it at like, the end of someone's turn, and you know, you can kind of get whatever, because like sometimes what happens is you tutor up something, and it's a sorcery, and you don't have enough mana for it at the time, so you have to wait a turn cycle, and then everyone else is in your hand, and you're like, uh, but this is an instant, so that's really good, and then you just get another instant, basically. Um, yeah, card's really good. Um, they also were just reprinted in, um, Eternal Masters. This one was just reprinted, so it's, it's only, like, six dollars or so right now, which isn't really that bad, so, um, yeah. Any sort of, like, control, counter, like, any sort of thing where you run, like, a lot of instants, I would really recommend this card. Um, okay, then is a personal favorite of mine, and I understand this card's a little bit more pricey, but if you have, like, $20 to spend, uh, Demonic Tutor, um... I love Demonic Tutor. I mean, I, I still have the same Demonic Tutor that I, I had when I first started playing Magic. Like, that was one of the first Magic cards that I got, and I was like, damn, this card's $20 and it has not changed. Um, you know, it's just really good. I mean, really, the fact that, yeah, it's sorcery speed, but you know what, it automatically goes into your hand, it's only two mana, and, um, you don't have to reveal it. So you can literally get anything. You're not bound by any specific requirements of getting an instant sorcery or creature. You can literally get anything you want. Cards, like, seriously won me so many games, you know, especially, too, in EDH. When you're talking about a format where your deck is has a lot of cards in it. And you only have one of each card. So there, like, there have been so many times where I swear I'm like, if I don't draw this one card, or if I don't tutor for this one card, I'm going to lose. Like, there's certain specific instances like that, um, and Demonic Tutor, like, helps you get there. So I really feel like this is, like, one card. Like, I I feel like there's certain cards that you could, you know, do substitutes. Like, seriously, if you just have $20 to spend, like, Demonic Tutor card is great. Yeah, okay. Like, I specifically, like, it's one of the, it's funny though it's one of those cards that like I have I don't know if I could I, I could probably put it in Super Friends but I have enough tutors in Super Friends that I don't even think I need it I'm also running four color but I have it in Tassiger and I do want it for ladies so I want the, the the art that I'm showing you which is like my favorite art the one with Liliana on it um that one's a little bit more expensive but I just really like it and I do want to get another one and like I said I try I try not to do repeat cards but my tutors are so good that I I can't not. All right, then we have Ring of Three Wishes. This is for you people who, um, you know, you're not finding any colors, specific tutors, you know, in your color. Um, you can run this in, like, any deck, basically. Um, and this also card, I think this card works really well in any of the sort of, like, Duretti-type strategies. Like, anything that you're running a lot of artifacts in, I think Ring of Three Wishes is, like, really essential for you. Um, yeah. Also not a very expensive card. I just looked it up. The card's, like, $2, which is awesome. So, um, you got the, your three counters on it, um, and then, you know, it's five mana, and then you remove a counter. But you know what? I really do feel like if you're running, like, any sort of, um artifact synergy i think this works really well because there's a lot of things that like make you untap and then you run um blink moth no not blink moth what is that thing um it's like the five mana thing where you get um um everyone it's like everyone on their upkeep gets mana equal to the amount of artifacts they have so i'm still blanking on the name of it right now um but it gets it generates a lot of mana so if you're running like that type of thing five mana like doesn't really seem like a lot you're also, you know, you're running artifacts, so you're running, like, a lot of mana rocks, like, Thran Dynamo, Soul Ring, like, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, the card's really good. It's definitely a lot of mana, 
Um, and yeah, it goes into your hand, which is awesome, and you don't have to reveal it. So Ring of Three Wishes is really good. Uh, I like this card a lot. I've never actually played with this card before, but I know other people who have, and it's a really good card. Okay, then we have Fierce Empath. Okay, so I think one of my favorite things to do with Fierce Empath is Fierce Empath for Woodland Bellower into Woodland Bellower into, like, Eternal Witness, get back, whatever. Like, that's a super awesome combo um, that I really, like, enjoy doing. Um, or you, instead of Eternal Witness, you get, like, Rex Siege. That's awesome. That's, like, a ton of fun. Um, yeah, Fierce Empath is really good. Any type of, like, Blink deck, I would say. Any deck that runs, like, really big creatures it's green right it has to be a green creature oh no it's like any creature oh that's sweet so you can run like any type of thing i have this card in yisan and it's awesome i love i love fierce empath it was one of those cards that i saw other people running and i was like i need to run that card too um yeah it's, it's a specific type of thing for creature but it's really really good if you have like bane of progress and like other really juicy stuff like six plus that you you really want to get on the field this really or like with a mellower like anything like that yeah cards really good all right, then my thing wasn't exiting. I was not on the right thing. Okay, then we have Sidisi, Undead Visor, or Visor, however you say it. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. Okay, so, like, first off, you know, she's got this really awesome exploit thing, and if you don't have, like, any other creatures on the board, you can just exploit herself, which I think is really good. Um, but if you don't, she chills, and she's a 5-mana 4-6 with Death Touch. Okay, so she's really stupid. I like her a lot. Um, you know, and then you exploit something, and if you exploit, you just get to tutor again. Don't have to reveal it. You can just get anything you want. You're not bound to a specific creature or anything like that. Like, I swear, like, at first when I saw Sadissi, I was like, I need 12. Like, she's awesome. Like, she's so good. And you know what? It's funny is I'm actually looking at her right now thinking, I need her in ladies. I don't know if I have her set aside on my list. I have to check that because she's just so good. She's so good. She's got a really awesome body. Tutors for, like, anything. Like, I love, love, love creatures that do things like that. This is, like, a, a huge thing that I love. Um, Sidisi's awesome. I love her. She's great. I'm gonna keep her open, so I keep her little picture on there so I remember. Okay, uh, now I don't know what this card does. Um... Okay, now you can't see my laptop. That's good. Okay, so I, I, I wear glasses, and so it's really hard when I have the... I don't know why I put the computer on there when I'm over here. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Uh, beseech the queen. Um, okay, so really like this because if you're someone where like three black mana is really hard because you're running like three, four, five colors, you can pay with two Phyrexian life. Uh, not Phyrexian life, sorry. You can pay with like two life, which I think is really sweet. Um, so you can do that. Uh, then you get to search equal to the number of lands you control. Less, oh, it's less than or equal to. Okay, sweet. Um, you do have to reveal this card. That is, I would say, kind of a downside. So, like, I would say, um, if you're someone who, like, really wants, like, a card like Demonic Tutor, but you can't afford it, I would say Beseech the Queen's a good option. I feel like this card is not that expensive. I feel like it's only, like, $2 or something from what I, I can remember. I just traded for one, so I, I don't remember the exact price off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, it's really good. I mean, it's less than or equal to the number of lands, so, like, I, I think you're running some sort of like mana acceleration or you should have lands on the board. I mean, I feel like you can run into it, mana issues in EDH, but I don't know. I don't feel like I see it as often. Like, I think it's like, if you don't get lands by turn like six, you know, game's probably over for you at that point. So I don't know. I just feel like the card's really cool. I like it. I'm excited to use this in ladies. Okay. Then we have Yisan, the Wanderer Bard. Okay. So like, I built Yisan, I don't even remember how long ago, and I was like, yo, this deck's lit, like, Yisan's just really good, and, you know, like, I don't see, like, anyone playing with this card, and Yisan's really, really good, and very underrated, in my opinion, because here's the deal, the first, like, three turns, you're kind of losing a little bit of value, because you're, you're tutoring, but you're getting, you're paying three mana, but again, you're playing green, so do you honestly really care about mana? Probably not. So, like, you're losing a little bit of value because, you know, you're paying three mana to get a one drop, but you're also tutoring for that one drop, which is still really solid, so, but then, after you get past three, you go up into, like, four, five, six, seven, eight mana things that you're paying three mana for, so not only are you paying three mana for them, but you're tutoring for them, so it's like you're gaining so much value, and let me tell you, 
you know, if you're building a deck around Yisan or you have Yisan in there, or you're playing like some sort of like deck where you want like things to untap and tap and that whole thing, you can run like Seeker of Skybreak is a card that I run in there and it's great. It's a two mana two one um untapped target creature. Like you tap it and then untap target creature. You run that, then there's this elf, uh, it's either an elf or a ranger card that's like return a forest to your hand. It's a one one for one, and then you bounce, um, you bounce a land to untap target creature. Yeah, run that yeast on. It's really freaking good because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll like yeast on twice, so I get like a five and a six drop for so much value. So the fact that not only are you paying little in the grand scheme of things when you get to a higher mana cost, um. But yeah, and then also, but you're also um, tutoring for those specific cards too. So Yisan is amazing. I really like him. I feel like there's not enough people on the Yisan bandwagon, and you totally should, because Yisan's really good. Uh, but also to keep in mind that it is a... Oh, no. Oh, yeah, okay. One thing about Yisan, though, is it's not less than or it has to be equal to there's this card called power conduit that you can run that I actually have proxied in my deck that I haven't bought yet because I haven't bought cards in a really long time um but you can like manipulate the amount of counters on something so yeah Yisan is great I love him okay then we have uh, actually the last card is Garrick Relentless and uh, which turns into Garrick um cur the curse veil or the veil curse or something yeah the veil curse okay so um, you know, it's really funny actually that I'm talking about Garrick because when I was playing my EDH game, Garrick is a card that I really never draw, which is fun. You know, like there's cards in your deck that you just never see. Like you're like, I've spent like $15 on this card and guess what card I'll never see? The really expensive $15 card. Um, but Garrick is really awesome. You know, I run him in Tassiger and you know, he does a lot of different things. So. His whole thing, first off, you know, he enters, he, he's got three loyalty for four, which is pretty good. And then when it's got two or few loyalty, you transform it. So then you, his first zero, you do three damage to something. So sometimes it's like they've got like a three, three, and you just have to kill it and you just kill Garrick off because you need to get rid of their creature. But sometimes there are things like a one, one, and it's really good. And you're like, I need to kill that. It does one damage to it. And then Garrick um, flips or his other zero, you get to put a two, two wolf on there, which is really good. Um, okay, then his when his when you flip him the veil cursed, um you, he puts a one one thing with death touch on the board which is great, and then his minus one you sack a creature and if you do you search your library for a creature card and you put it into your hand which is awesome. Um any sort of thing that's running like you know you're running like black green EDH that you want things to be into your graveyard and you want to like you know evolutionary leap birthing pod any type of like strategy like that. Garrick really is very good in there. And then his his minus three is um, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So again, that graveyard synergy, but like the real thing I honestly care about in here is dealing three damage to something, killing it, then flipping him, and then the next turn um, having him stick around so I can minus and tutor him. Um, it's not a, he's not a card that stays on the board for very long. There's some Planeswalkers that I feel like have a longer time where they get to stay on the board because they have a lot more loyalty, but um, Garrick doesn't really have that much loyalty to start out with. Um, and he, just because you're, you're doing three damage to something, and a lot of times that's a one, two thing. You only get to tutor like one or two times, sometimes not at all, because you just have to kill their creature and you can't even worry about, um, you know, you just use him as a removal spell basically. But I like the versatility in Garrick. I think he's really good. I, I've actually thought quite a bit about taking him out of Super Friends, but then when I draw him and I play with him, I'm like, okay, he's really good. I can't take him out. So, uh, yeah guys, that was it for talking about tutors. This is part one doing part two and who even knows i feel like i i want to do all these top these cool top 10 videos that I, I really enjoy doing and then like i i i just get distracted and then there's all these other videos that i need to do and then that's yeah so uh yeah let me know what you guys think and i'll talk to you later bye